Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and welcome to the fourth and final part of this Resident Evil Village Monsters Explained mini-series. This time looking into Metal Mysterio Carl Heisenberg and his human experimentations, the Soldats. Previously, we have looked at Castle Dimitrescu, House Beneviento, Lord Salvatore Moreau, and the Lycan Horde, as well as an in-depth analysis of Mother Miranda during a video explaining the story behind Resident Evil Village. Only one Lord now remains, so sit back, relax, and let's step into the electrifying realm of this Man of Steel. Carl Heisenberg belonged to one of the four ruling houses which oversaw the village and its people and appears to be of German descent. At a young age, he was taken from the village by Mother Miranda and implanted with a Kadu parasite as part of her experiments. Out of all the test subjects, Carl was deemed the most successful, gaining electrical organs similar to that of Electric Ray Narc Japonica. These electrical organs connected to Heisenberg's nervous system and allowed him to control electricity throughout his entire body. This making him a walking human magnet, able to control metal at will via magnetic fields. He also gained extreme levels of strength, wielding a mighty hammer made from truck parts in one hand with ease. After the Kadu experiments, Mother Miranda made Carl one of her four council members and tasked him with maintaining order in the region while she searched for the perfect specimen to resurrect her lost daughter Eva, eventually finding said specimen in Ethan's daughter Rose. However, unlike the other lords, Heisenberg did not wish to work as Miranda's servant. He despised her for what she had done, and approached Ethan to help him take her down. It's a test, to see if you're strong enough to be a part of Miranda's family. I don't want to be a part of Miranda's family. Neither did I, but here we are! And I'm next in line, right? You and me, Ethan. Together, we can go save Rose, and then we can use her to grind Miranda into paste. To do this, Heisenberg had secretly been using his factory to build up a metal army which could overthrow the priestess. He had told Miranda the factory was being used for experimental research with the Kadu, much like the other lords were also carrying out. But as we shall see, these experiments served as a much more personal goal for revenge. Before we take a look at these nightmarish creations, it is worth noting the influences which inspired the creation of Carl Heisenberg, for which this seems to be free. The most notable of these influences is Dr. Victor Frankenstein, a scientist who dabbled in electrical experiments designed to reanimate the dead. Secondly, we see elements of Frankenstein's creature Adam in Heisenberg. The creature was made from different human and animal parts, and eventually rebelled against his creator, much like Carl rebels against his creator Miranda. Finally, Dr. Werner Karl Heisenberg was a German theoretical physicist who specialised in ferromagnetism, a mechanism which allowed materials to be attracted to magnets. Not only did both of these people have very similar names, the Heisenberg found within the story of Resident Evil Village literally uses this electromagnetic ability during his boss fight encounter. With the trivia out of the way, let's dig into Heisenberg's experiments and see what his creepy factory has in store. The most basic enemy type encountered within the factory is the Hauler. These festering mutants are a male variant of the Moriaka, a zombie-like creature we elaborated on in the Castle Dimitrescu video. Haulers come equipped with headgear which stimulates and monitors their neural activity, allowing them to perform basic tasks such as working in the mines and attacking intruders, despite their brain-dead state. While a little tougher to take down than their female counterparts for Moriaka, these lumbering test subjects don't pose too much of a threat, although they can be troublesome in large groups. These haulers are armed with giant axes forged from scrap metal. 
The soldats are human experiments created via cybernetic surgical enhancements within the factory by Carl. Once dead, they have now been resurrected via the fitting of various machinery. These mechanical hearts are represented by glowing core reactors on their chests. Ethan must destroy these metal hearts in order to take the soldat in question down. Now the word soldat translated into English means soldier, and this is most fitting as these terrifying creations were by design soldiers for Heisenberg's metal army. They were to be used in the battle Heisenberg wished to wage against Mother Miranda, however as we shall soon see, he never got the chance to initiate this conflict. These soldats come in many shapes and sizes, each with varying degrees of danger. In the following section, we'll take a brief look at each of their subclasses. Soldat Ein are the most basic form of Heisenberg's metal soldier. They wear headgear to monitor and control brainwaves, a reactor core welded to their chest to keep them alive. Their right arm consists of a giant drill, which they charge up before plunging into their victims. Zwei are upgraded from Ein. They also wear breathing apparatus, which does hint their physical condition is a little more unstable and they perhaps require a constant airflow to breathe. The Zwei core is found on their backs, which makes taking them down considerably harder. They also come equipped with two drill arms rather than one, dealing out far more damage if we are caught. Soldat Jet is by far the most removed from their original human form. Their head is highly armoured and modified, recalling the appearance of a hammerhead shark. They come equipped with jetpacks which allow them to leap for great distances, although their flight capability is limited. Jets also feature laser beam eyes, which can burn right through anything standing in their path. Last, but most definitely not least, is the Soldat Panzer, a hulking powerhouse of cybernetic enhancements. This soldier is heavily fortified beneath layer upon layer of armour. Luckily, this plating does not hold up too well against explosives, and so a few well-placed mines or pipe bombs will dislodge it, exposing the fragile core beneath. Blowing away their masks also reveals the panzer's face, which eerily wears a constant maniacal grin, as if taking some kind of sick pleasure from proceedings. Sturm was the most radical and most ridiculous of Heisenberg's test subjects, one he seems to regret making and relegated to executioner status, ensuring no one could escape his factory unscathed. Sturm was a complete failure of design and practicality, the propeller on its head consisting of three chainsaw blades welded onto a rotor, which was so deadly they even chopped through the wretched specimen's own arms. Carl shows frustration with this monstrosity, as it is a walking embodiment of a creation he could not control or use in his army in any meaningful way. Last time, you freak! I swear to God! You don't want to find out what's in that hole. The Sturm's legs are braced to support the enormous weight of its upper body, a mass of junk metal with the reactor powering it located at the tip of its spinal column. Without the power of sight, Sturm blindly charges in the direction of its prey, often running through walls in the process. Ethan ends up in a close quarters battle with Sturm after being cast down into its lair by Carl. Check out some footage from this head to head. I don't have time for this bullshit. Out of my way.
Stay down. Here's a few fun facts for this particular creature. The word Sturm is German and fittingly translated into English means storm. This monster was heavily influenced by one which appeared in a horror movie called Frankenstein's Army. As you can see from the photograph on screen now, the resemblance is uncannily similar. Finally, when we reference in-game concept art for Sturm, we are told the original idea the writers came up with was to have this monster be Carl Heisenberg's biological father, so I guess Carl wasn't too keen on his dad. The idea was later scrapped as it did not fit well with the story as presented in-game. Before we cap off this episode, let's quickly address the fall of Heisenberg. We know he wanted to use Ethan's daughter Rose as a bioweapon against Miranda, teaming up with her father in the process. Together, we go save Rose, and we can use her to grind Miranda into paste. My daughter is not a weapon. This of course was not what any loving parent would want for their child, so Ethan naturally refused, and this ended with the two potential allies becoming rivals. Heisenberg using his electrical powers to transform into a giant mass of scrap metal, resembling a battle tank. However, thanks to a chance reunion with his old pal Chris Redfield, Ethan happens upon a tank of his own, one made from mechanical components which Carl could not control. In this tank, Ethan managed to finally face off with Heisenberg and take him down for good. Check out some highlights from this showdown. You're like a goddamn cockroach! You think you can take me on? This will be my work before I kill the bitch. Cow, in the face of my steel glory! Guess I do have to thank that bitch for ending this. <laughs> I'll kill her with the power she gave me. That's what I call being a good son! <laughs> I've done it. Twenty years under the bitch's thumb! A humorous piece of trivia from this battle comes when Chris Redfield blows up Heisenberg's factory. At this point, Carl refers to Redfield as a, quote, boulder punching asshole. The reason for this is because of a sequence from the final chapter of Resident Evil 5, where in order to reach the other side of a lava lake, Chris used his burly arms to quite literally punch a giant boulder out of his way, a scene which has been ridiculed and memed by audiences ever since. It seems Capcom understood this and wanted to remind us all that, yes, Chris Redfield really is that strong. 
But with this metal giants now down and out, we can finally close the book on this mini-series explaining the monstrous world of Resident Evil Village. The last few weeks have been pretty Resident Evil heavy on the channel, and it's now time to move on to some other horror games for a little while. But I do hope you have enjoyed my coverage of Village, including a full playthrough, story analysis, and a look at the characters from its creepy world. If you did enjoy this video then remember to leave me a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.